and welcome to The Moment with me, Maxine Mawinney. My guest went from earning money as a babysitter to an overnight pop sensation at the age of 17 in Girls Aloud. Nadine Coyle from Derry in Northern Ireland recalls reaching number one in the charts and then having to cook meals in her restaurant when the chef walked out. <laughs> Nadine, what was your moment? My moment was when I had moved to London. I was 17 and we just got to number one because it was number one. And I thought, what has what has happened in my life? It's I'm not just the babysitter anymore. What's going on? And that was with Girls Alive. That was with Girls Alive. So take yes. us back to the beginning, though, because you don't just suddenly arrive in London and join this band and, and become number one. Take us right back to the beginning from home in Northern Ireland. So home, I loved growing up in Derry in Northern Ireland. Loved, you know, went to a great school, had great friends. Um, I have two sisters, you know, great parents. So everything, you know, was very idyllic, lovely childhood and, and in my teenage years. But I've been interested in singing and I sung, you know, various different things, never professionally or anything. Um, and then I auditioned for a band and kept getting through to the next round and the next round and the next round. And then they invited me to come over and live in a house with all of these other girls. And it was still the audition process. And that just kept going until eventually... I was on the band and the song was number one and we have all these people around, like these music industry people and I'm thinking, what does that mean? A record label? What does that mean? A tour manager? Uh, what are these things? So just learning from scratch. And explain how the band was put together. It was an audition process. So everybody just auditioned and and then they had, you know, different rounds. It was um, a show called Pop Stars The Rivals. So they were looking for a girl band and a boy band. When you were auditioning, did you think you would get through? No, absolutely not. Each round or each day, I expected to be, that was going to be my last time there. I didn't think at all for one second, especially being from Northern Ireland. I think I was the only Irish one on the competition that had gone so far. So you're kind of out of your comfort zone as well almost so you're just expecting but you were very young as well yeah I was very young and there was a lot of older girls and, and things and for so you just don't think that you're going to get through so each day I was like okay this will be the day when I'll not get through or this will be the day and that day didn't didn't happen and nobody was more shocked than I was I was like what how did this happen <laughs> so the band gets together you didn't know each other before no no we didn't so how did that work like dynamically um, you just have to get on with it. You, you know, you, um, it's almost like if you start a new job and you're, you know, with people and you have to get to know each other as you're working. Mm -hmm. um, so it was very much like that. And take us through the process of, you, you talked about tour managers and being on the road. So what, what actually happened then? Did, did you go on the road? Did you have to write music? What happened? So for the first um, few, for the few, first few months, it was just, it was a blur. Um, not a lot of sleep, doing loads of shows, nightclubs and um, universities and then TV shows. And there was lots of magazines in those days, like kids magazines, Sugar and Pop and Smash Hits and all of those. So just every day and night was completely filled with having something to do. So just it's all a bit of a blur. So you became instantly famous at the age of 17. Mm -hmm. How did you cope with it? I think it was fine. I think whenever you're doing it yourself, you're removed from it. And you can see other people sl are treating you slightly differently than before. But that's the only real difference. Better hotel you're, rooms? You, yeah, you do. But even in those days, we had to share hotel rooms. So you're still sharing a room and doing you know, loads of work, meeting loads more people, doing another show. So you just don't really know what's going on. You're just trying to... Stay awake. Girls Alive became enormous, didn't they? Huge. Yes, yes, it's done really well. So tell us how many records, how many, you know, well, give me give me the statistics. I am so bad. Because <laughs> Come I on, those should, saying, be, those should be know, on your brain, shouldn't they? I know. I was, I was saying for ages that it was 20 top hat, 10 hats or something. There's more than that. 
I think um, it might have been 22. I think it's, yes. I read. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I don't know. So that period, was it, when you look back on it, is it like it happened to someone else? Or is it, have you got moments within that you, you completely treasure? I mean, a lot of the, the moments, they're all treasured. And that's the great thing about your memory. You can look back and pick the best day and relive it at whatever, you know, whenever you want. And there were lots of great times. There was the, you know, when the song went to number one. Um, How do you hear it when your song goes to number one? Who tells you? Somebody just came into the dressing room. It was like somebody from the record label. And at that point, I wasn't really sure who does what. <laughs> this person came in and told us that we were number one. And the reaction? Everyone was screaming. It was like, because it was not expected at all. It was so unexpected that it was right before Christmas. Everyone, I think it was our last day at work before we were going home to see our families. We had gotten the band. Everyone was exhausted and just, you know, they didn't have that. It was the icing on the cake of the whole thing. And what difference does having a number one make? Not much, really. <laughs> It really doesn't, other than it's like, oh, yeah, that was number one. Oh, yeah, that one was number one. That's the one you can remember. All their chart positions you forget. You're like, was that two or was that three or was that five or was that What's your three? favorite song? Oh, that is like asking to pick a favorite child. <laughs> um, All right, give me a selection then. I love Sound of the Underground. Mm -hmm. It's the first one. And today we're doing rehearsals for some of these songs. And it's great to, hold, to hear them again. Because you're revisiting it now, aren't you? Yes, revisiting some of the older songs. But we've done versions where, where I've sang them, so it's different than the rest of yeah. having the rest of the gear. Yeah. So it's slightly different. But is it's it like a trip song. down memory lane? It is exactly like a trip down memory lane. It really, really is in the best possible way. And when you're singing them now, today, does it take you back? Or what, what sort of feeling do you get? Excited. You know, they're very, the songs are very exciting. So the way I felt when I was doing the songs then, I probably enjoy them even more now mm. because you can, you can appreciate it more. Um, so yes, it's, and then you remember, are oh, we done this video or this is the day we done this? And I wore the dress and I wore And I wore this and this is who was the here and this is my boyfriend at the time and this is what, yeah, so it's <laughs> definitely. <laughs> what happened with Girls Aloud? Um, so what was it, 22, 22 songs, I think it was. So, yeah. Um, it just became a thing. A lot of hard work went into it, mm -hmm. and it just became bigger than I think any of us really imagined and imagined it was going to be. And we just kept working, and, and then we had recently done a reunion tour. Not a reunion, but a, you know, a tour. Reflection. Yes, a greatest hits tour. Okay. That's what it's called. <laughs> called Ten. We had been together for ten years at that point. So that was um that was five years ago now. And then nothing. And then we haven't done anything for the last yes, for the last few years. Five years. Well, I had a baby. Yes. So I have a four year old. So I was very busy right after that tour. <laughs> Will we see you getting back together? Well, I don't know. You know, the last time, um, when we came and done the the tan tour was was a great experience. Maybe again, if it all if it all makes sense, everybody always has, you know, so many things. Mm. And and because all of our teams are all different, we yeah. all work with different people. Um, that they kind of get it all together again. We'll see. Yeah, somebody will have to make it their business to make it work. It's a bit like Spice Girls, I suppose. Oh, am I allowed to say that? Yes, mention the Spice Girls. Of course, <laughs> yeah, I love the Spice Girls. Were, were they an influence? Yes, I remember my friend coming and telling me that I needed to hear this song when their song came out, that wannabe song. And I remember it was a beautiful day in Ireland, and it's just one of those memories that really sticks. And it was their song, so they have been an influence. <laughs> What about, you, you said when you went into the band at the beginning, it was like you, you coming together as a job, more or less. Are you still together? Do you, do you get in touch with each other? Or do you? Not really. No, not really. I mean, occasionally I see, um, although again, it's been years and years since I've seen her, Sarah, but our paths don't really cross anymore. We worked a lot together, you know, some years ago. But then we just don't really, we don't have the same friends or we don't have the same jobs anymore. And you're in uh, L.A. a lot as well, aren't you? And I had the restaurant in L.A. 
Um, Tell us about your restaurant. Yes, that was great. <laughs> Loved having, yes, that was on um, Sunset Beach in California. And what was it called? It was called the Irish Mist, is what it was always called. So they had just put a Nadine's in front of it just for, and I didn't know they were doing that. Yeah. It's like, what have you done? <laughs> Name and lights. Um, and I just love, because I love to cook. So anything cooking or... So what, you're in the in the bar cooking? Well, one day I was. <laughs> Not every day. And chefs are notoriously temperamental. Yeah. So one of our chefs just kind of lost the head one day and stormed out. He was Irish as well. And he, yeah, just stormed out. So you had to take over? So I... I what did you cook? Oh, i well, I had to keep referring to the menu, even though I had put the menu together. It was before. Mm -hmm. So when people were ordering things, I had to keep going to keep and going Could you to the cook menu. everything? Yes, I could. Yeah. What was really heavy was the, you know, the big industrial fryers. So that was, I had to get one of the, one of the guys, the prep guys to do that. <laughs> I was like, I, I actually can't lift it. It's far too heavy when it's full of chips. So if I'd come in that day, what would you have been cooking? What would I have been eating made by Nadine? Um, well, there was a curry special. Mm -hmm. um, so that was handy. He ever ordered that. I was like, oh, it's just so handy. But then anything else on the menu basically was was available. I could make it for you. You could order it. And I would have had to look at the menu and say, okay, in a Caesar salad, what are we putting in our Caesar salads? Okay. And here we don't those often in Northern Ireland, do yes. we? No, I didn't know what a Caesar salad was until I moved to London, which is terrible. Talking about Northern Ireland, when you go back, um, I mean, it must be amazing for your parents and your family, but what about people in Derry? Do they come up to you? Do they still, you know, say, oh, hi. Yeah, people are lovely. Really, really, really lovely. Um, and so it means it takes you ages to get anywhere because you're just stopping chatting to people for ages. You're like, oh, how is this? Or how is that? Or, but it's great. It's a really, it's a really nice community and you always know people. So you daren't go out to wait half dressed. Oh, you have to have your makeup on. You have to have your makeup yeah. on there Absolutely. or you will be caught. You yeah. will run under somebody. Exactly. That you know. Exactly. And they say, I saw her without her makeup. <laughs> yes. I was buying toilet roll one day randomly for my sister's house. And this guy was like, oh, can I get a picture? Oh, As you're holding the toilet roll. I'm holding the toilet roll on this picture. That then it showed up on Facebook somewhere that my sister showed me. I was like, oh, no, you just can't even be embarrassed about these things, can you? Nadine, what's the future holding? <laughs> Lots of um, shows coming up this summer. Mm -hmm. So I'm rehearsing now for that to kind mm -hmm. of get it all together. Um, so some summer festivals and things. And then... Who just knows? Go with it, yeah. Just go, just see what happens. Nadine, if you could go back to that original moment when you were 17, you'd arrived in London and you'd heard that you're in this band and you were number one, what would you change, if anything, and why? I think I would keep it the same um, because it was all so new and exciting. And when you're 17, I mean, I wasn't afraid of anything, even to London. As you know, I would be more afraid now. You. If I had to just pack up and go and live in a whole new country. Whereas then you just have the confidence and you're just kind of ready to try new things. So I really, I really enjoyed that kind of feeling of being free and trying something new. So I would keep it exactly how it was. Other things I would change, that I would keep the same. <laughs> Nadine, thank you very much indeed. Thank you.